Uh, our next speaker is going to be talking to us about the role of critical thinking and creativity in transforming education. He's a Fulbright New Century Scholar and is currently leading the work on the COVID-19 crisis in relation to digital education at the OECD, where he's a senior analyst and deputy head of division. So please join me in welcoming Stéphane Vincent Lacrin to the screen. And this is a live session now, so you will have the opportunity to ask some questions uh, at the conclusion. So please put them in the chat. Uh, Stéphane, to you. Hello, thank you so much. That's really my pleasure to you know, be here with you today. And indeed to, to talk about um, creativity, critical thinking, but also a little bit, I will try on uh, digitalization. So first, you know, let me start with one of my favorite quotes of Alice, you know, trying to reinvent, you know, a few things, trying to think about impossible things. And I think that's really what you will have to do when trying to reshape the future of education, digitalization, but good news is that impossible is possible. So that's really one of already the messages of, of, of my presentation. So what I'm going to do is actually talk a little bit of, about three different things. First, that reshaping can actually come around reshaping, you know, the providing the skill that people need in the future. And so then I will focus on creativity and critical thinking to uh, illustrate that then finish with some reflections on digital education and talk about um, some of the frontiers of digitalization right now and actually what the COVID pandemics has uh, told us about the reality of digitalization. So let me start, you know, I think that one of the big objectives for countries, what drives, you know, what, how to shape the future of education is basically thinking about what will you know, improve people's well-being over the future, but also what will allow them to have jobs and what you know, the, the economy needs. And for that, we, with colleagues, we have uh, done some work. You know, we, have, we know that innovation is one of the important aspects of any economy and, and economic growth. And so we've actually looked at uh, surveys, an international survey that uh, asked people who were in employment uh, what are the key skills that they use in their job? And we have two different types of people in there. Some people who actually uh, say that their organization is at the forefront of innovation and that they participate in innovation. So we call these people the innovators um, and those who don't. And here you can see on this slide, what are the skills that actually um, differentiate the most people who you know, have an innovative job from the others. And you can see that coming with new ideas and solutions, creativity, the willingness to question ideas, you know, critical thinking, communication, presentation skills, being entrepreneurial, alert to opportunities, but also having a critical thinking, et cetera, are the ones that distinguish those people the most. And interestingly, creativity is really uh, you know, the key differentiator, you know, you're almost four times as likely to say that it is important in your job if you have an innovative job compared to if you don't have one. Many studies, employer studies show more or less the same, you know, in terms of what is uh, the demand for skills. So what are the things that are really trending and that are expected to continue, you know, creativity, social and emotional intelligence, uh, complex reasoning, and the thing that actually are a bit less important perhaps is all the more technical and operational skills. Other survey, but you know, same types of, of results, you know, so analytical thinking and innovation is what uh, CEO consider to be the most important skills, you know, and the, the one that are the most demanded and they believe that it's going to remain the same, but you also have creativity, critical thinking, complex problem solving or technology design and programs, which are also trending and will become more uh, important. So one of the things that you know, we, we need to think when we start thinking about shaping the future of, of education is basically what are the skills that should education system should foster. One way of thinking about it is to think of them as three big categories. One is what we usually uh, focus on, you know, what I call the technical skills, you know, so that the knowledge, the know what and the know how in different domains. Then you also have the social and emotional skills or the behavioral and social skills, you know, the, 
the attitudes and values that, that you should have in different domains as well. And then the higher order skills, creativity and critical thinking, and I'm going to focus a bit more on those um, immediately. So one of the big problems, so all the 21st century skill discussion is about those things. So I'm going to focus on creativity and critical thinking, but obviously the methods that we have developed and I'm going to present also works for, let's say, uh, collaboration and communication. You know, if we think of all the different possible C's that are important in education. So big question is what the hell do we mean by that? You know, because in fact, most countries agree, most teachers agree or don't disagree, most parents agree that those are important things. Uh, and still we have difficulties or we still feel the need to actually improve uh, in these different areas. And one of the big problems that we have is that we're not, you know, we're not quite sure what we mean exactly. So what does it mean to develop those skills as part of, of education? And so that's really something that, you know, we have to, to, to discuss and, and, and with practitioners. So that's what we've done with an OECD project, um, which brought together uh, a school networks in 11 different countries. So it's really something that we've done uh, internationally, and where we try to actually articulate a common language. So what do we mean? What does it look like in school? We have tried to support uh, teachers by showing how do you implement it in your teaching and learning. We've tried to support uh, policy makers and school principals by you know, documenting how you can actually de develop professional learning opportunities uh, and also try to support the development of instruments that would allow you to know whether you're achieving what you are trying to do when you want to develop those different skills. So this has included a variety of, of countries, variety of cultures, and we've really worked with a lot of, of, of people and where we've been able to field test during two years uh, the different things that we have actually developed. One of the key aspects is actually developing a, a rubric which defines in very simple ways, which simplifies what we mean by creativity, what we mean by critical thinking, uh, and what it looks like uh, in a classroom. So we've had four big headings, inquiring, imagining, doing, reflecting, and then you have descriptors for all the different skills. We can do it in a nicer way. You know, we've commissioned uh, very nice comics from a, a great comic, Grant Snyder, and you know, we can have a sense of what these different ideas do actually mean, but what they do mean usually for as part of the, the lesson plans is actually to really work on creating students' needs and interest to learn. So that usually start with uh, big questions, uh, be challenging. Many, in many cases, actually, some of the things that people do in school is not challenging enough. That's why it is not so interesting to many of the students. Uh, Develop clear technical knowledge. That's a very important aspect. You know, this is not about having uh, courses in critical thinking or courses in creativity, but really continue to do your mathematics, uh, your language art skills, your uh, physics, chemistry, music, visual arts, etc. While you get opportunities to actually develop these different skills. And it's also about including the development of, of a product. So it's not just about preparing for a test, but it's about doing something that can actually be uh, assessed. What's very challenging in many cases and changes a bit from current practice is that you have to allow students to co-design part of the product and the solution so that, you know, it's not... Um, um, so it's not just one answer to, 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 to the problem, and there is actually the possibility to do something which is personally novel and engaging. So you have to choose the right type of problems, deal with the problems that, look, that can be looked at from different perspectives. And what's very difficult is when you do that, things actually may become uh, less scripted than you would expect, you know? So you have to leave room for the unexpected and, you know, allow if you're a teacher, for example, um, understand that you may not know the answer uh, that was actually raised by the students. And of course, a very important aspect of also is actually to reflect on what has been done, you know? And so I think that as was said initially, you know, the journey is really as important as the output. So we have summarized all it, and basically, you know, what is very important is to have clarity of the learning outcomes, good examples, so that in fact, 
We know what it looks like and we can adapt what we're doing. And for that, we need actually to scaffolding. It's not just giving, telling, I want creativity or I want creative thinking. You know, you really need to get, showcase what it actually looks like. And for that, you also have to provide some professional learning opportunities. It doesn't have to be training. It can be a project. It can be community of practice. So that actually people understand that, you know, it's very important for this objective to give structure and challenge, but also to uh, embed clear opportunities for students to actually develop those different things. So it comes with appropriate task assignments and assessment criteria in the different uh, areas. Good news is that these things can actually be supported digitally and we're currently working on a tablet that will actually support to do that. So that's really an app and that kind of uh, leads us to the digital uh, topic as well. Another project we, we work on at the OECD is on um, you know, the frontiers of digital education. So we're talking about all the technologies which are fashionable, AI, artificial intelligence, robots, blockchain, the internet of things, you know, and, and connected smart devices, and all the learning analytics and dashboards that come with them. And, you know, they already allowed to do different things. One is actually, and it's already pretty uh, common in some countries, is an uh, early warning system that actually try to diagnose and um, predict when students will be at risk of dropping out of high school. And so that actually, you know, the school principals and the adults there can intervene and provide them with uh, uh, support so that it doesn't happen. Another way is really the, the way how we rethink assessments and exams and how actually games and simulations can actually make assessments very different from what they are right now and much more applied, much more interesting and much more um, um, able to assess more complex skills than the one that we currently have. But in the classroom, in some cases, you know, we have a lot of possibilities to personalize learning, to give all the students the kind of tasks that they need the kind of uh, structure, you know, the kind of groups that, that they would need. And in some domains, for example, in mathematics, it is something that is becoming increasingly uh, uh, useful. Something which is a bit newer and not deployed yet at scale at all are classroom analytics, which actually give teachers in real time feedback about what's going on in their class. So giving them tips about, is it time, for example, for me to change and go to um, uh, the next activity? or telling them, oh, my students are starting to get bored, so let me do something different. Or also telling them things like, um, you know, you're only talking to, um, you know, the strongest students in your class. Uh, perhaps you should actually focus more on the one uh, having more difficulties. You know, that's uh, so a lot of professional feedback on what they are actually uh, doing. And we have robots. So robots are not going to replace teachers anytime soon. But they are, can be actually quite useful in, in the learning process. They work as uh, peer learners, you know, you, we are sometimes as tutors, uh, sometimes as, um, um, you know, friends that uh, uh, students teach. Uh, and so that's also something which is not deployed at scale, except in coding and, and, and robotics in some countries, but uh, which may be one of the different things that could happen in the future. So here we're talking about the frontiers of technology and digital education. But one of the things we've learned from the COVID crisis is that actually we are still far from the frontier and not only in OECD countries, but everywhere. And what we've realized is actually how the digital divide uh, still important, how important it still is in many countries. And that's true even within OECD countries where access to online is not as great as we would expect, access to computers, but even actually access to some older technologies like radio and TV that were used during the, um, uh, the crisis. We have a great infrastructure of open online resources, but one of the big problems to access them was actually that they were not used, curated, and so not as easily uh, accessible as we would have uh, imagined. And interestingly, you know, there was a kind of revival of the old or even the low-tech technology with radio and TV and social networks being really one of the important uh, response to the crisis, especially in uh, middle-income and lower-middle-income countries. 
usually with a reinvention of what it meant to, to provide TV or radio education, thanks to text messages, YouTube channels, etc., where actually there could be a sense of interactivity and sometimes even worksheets that were distributed to, uh, uh, to students. But what we've realized everywhere that school teachers don't have experience with the use of technology, especially when it is uh, remotely speaking, and also that learners struggle much more than many people uh, would have imagined before. So we are still kind of uh, far from many of um, um, you know, the frontiers I was describing before. With colleagues at the, the World Bank, uh, 100 and uh, the Harvard Global Education Innovation uh, Initiative, we have actually documented many of the different initiatives that have happened and you can find them, you have here at the site. Uh, a lot of different things that were done digitally during uh, the crisis, both by governments or by uh, non-governmental organizations. And a lot of very interesting, you know, um, so you can have a look and, and find out a bit more why you do that. So to conclude, if you want, you know, to think about embracing the digital education for all, well, I think one of the key messages of, you know, uh, that I would advise is first think of what will be the skills that people will actually need to have and what also will make them happy, you know, and, and uh, good citizens. Think of a good method for, so that the change that your organization can actually really happen. In many cases, you know, we tend to think, uh, have well, so-called wishful thinking, but in fact, change can happen. So we have to really to think about uh, how this can be the case. I think you can use some of the methods that we have developed on creativity and critical thinking, you know, uh, inquire, imagine, do, reflect. And keep in mind that digital technology will not change education in and by itself, you know, but so we have to think of how the humans are going to use it to learn or to teach and how what also how the social uh, structures that come with them are going to change for that to happen. So I wish you all a great challenge uh, and really look forward to seeing all the results. Change is not easy, but it's possible. So i uh, really looking forward to all your different solutions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefan. That was uh, fantastic. And, uh, you know, I got to say, I had no idea how innovative some of the things that you described, these like use of robots and classroom analytics. I had no idea this was happening. That's really fantastic. We do have a number of questions. So let's see if we can get uh, through a couple of these. Um, one is very interesting. Uh, it's about creativity. It says, what recommendations do you have for our educators to be more creative, not just our students? Well, um, I think that some of the, 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 well, there are two different things. One is that, you know, providing creative education is one of the important aspects to actually make students more uh, educated, so, which means actually to accept to go out of your comfort zone in some cases, you know, and challenge yourself, you know, as, as an educator. So that's really one uh, of the different aspects. But one important thing to note is that you can also actually uh, develop the creativity by making a, with a more traditional kind of education, but being very, very intentional and aware of what you're trying to achieve, you know? So it's really about giving the right task, et cetera. And for that, you know, you have to, like the students, you have to take risks and be willing to do things which are personally novel. Right. Okay, I think we have time for one more. And I think this is a very interesting one. It says, uh, there are many issues in education, as you've said, but if there was one specific issue you could completely eradicate right now, what would it be? Sorry for the hard one. It's just so interesting. It is, it, it is a hard one, you know. What, what is the one thing that we could eradicate? Um, I think that actually, you know, things like um, um, illiteracy probably is one of the things that we could now uh, eradicate uh, because we have the tools actually to, 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 to do it, you know? So a lot of it is really about uh, goodwill. There are a few things like, you know, dyslexia, which makes things a bit um, more complicated, et cetera. But now we have many actually digital tools that allow to, to diagnose and then to try to fix all these different issues. So I think that it is really something that we, are, that we could uh, 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 
eradicate uh, and that is a low hanging fruit. Okay, fantastic. Uh, one question, somebody asked if there was a, the website for the resources for education during COVID. Did, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, so we have one, you know, you can find it on the OECD website and, and on the World Bank website. Uh, it's, you know, I will share my presentation so that you can actually go and find it. You know, I've, I've put the, uh, hype, the, uh, the link there. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate you. you taking the time here.